State Senator John Briggs is Anita Bryant's go-to guy in California for sure. He filed a petition for a statewide referendum to fire all gay teachers and anyone who supports them. So this means that the fight is coming here. The year 1978 represented a lot of change. While not in the movie, parenthetically, this is the year that, also the year that Proposition 13 passed. One of the main reasons that the state of California is in such a budget crisis today. But that's another sermon for another day. But at the end of the clip, there was a mention of another initiative in California in 1978. The Briggs Initiative, Proposition 6, would have prohibited gay folks from serving as teachers in the public schools. Yes, really, that was on the ballot in this state in 1978. It was such a bad proposition that even Ronald Reagan opposed it. <laughs> really. And he even wrote an opposing op-ed in the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, the rival to the Times at the, at the time. He wrote that saying what a bad bill it was. So who was supportive of the Briggs Initiative? Well, Milk mentioned it in the film clip, Anita Bryant and her oranges. I'm not putting her orange groves, her orange people. I won't put her image up on the screen. By this time, she had become, in the United States, the spokesperson for the Christian viewpoint in the media. And she was very willing to say that gay and lesbian persons were not of sacred worth. To God. Wrong. Let's say that together. Wrong. Gay and lesbian persons are of sacred worth to God. We are all of sacred worth to God. Amen? Amen. But Anita Bryant's actions, speaking for good Christians everywhere, turned so many people away from church, away from temple, away from God, that even to think about the damage that was done in those years before and since simply breaks my heart. And I know it breaks your heart as well. Milk knew. Harvey Milk knew. Do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with God. When we exclude any part of God's family, we stop doing what God requires of us. The night that Anita Bryant and her exclusionary group won a ballot measure in Kansas, Milk was called upon to calm folks in San Francisco. But his work to bring forth an end to the injustice of homophobia and discrimination reached far beyond the limits of the city and even of the state. Yes, Jesus loves me. Anita Bryant was once known as an orange juice saleswoman. Hi, I'm Anita Bryant. Hi, I'm Anita Bryant. Hello, I'm Anita Bryant. With a religious fervor that has made her America's most controversial woman overnight, her group is crusading to repeal a new Dade County law which protects homosexuals in jobs and housing. I believe that more than ever before that there are evil forces round about us even perhaps disguised as something good, that would want to tear down the very foundation, the family unit, that holds America together. There are those people who say that it is kind of an eye for an eye law that is at work here, that you're denying homosexuals many of their rights as well. You see, if homosexuals are allowed their civil rights, then so would prostitutes or thieves or anyone else. God puts it in a category of morality. Doesn't that necessarily follow that you believe that homosexuality ought to be illegal? I do believe that it should be illegal well, because I think it's not... We a lost, issue. but we didn't lose by much. More votes than ever! That used to make you laugh. Well, the people of Dade County, the normal majority, have said enough, enough, enough. Singer Anita Bryant's well-publicized emotional crusade and appeal Dade County's gay rights law ended with the voting for the Senate. 300,000 Miami. Scotty, I'm sorry, sir. I read about you in the paper. 
I'm sorry. I can't talk right now. Sir, I think I'm going to kill myself. But no, you don't want to do that. Where are you calling from? Minnesota. You saw my picture in the paper in Minnesota? How did I look? My folks are going to take me to this place tomorrow. A hospital. To fix me. There's, there's nothing wrong when you listen to me. You just get on a bus to the nearest biggest city, to Los Angeles or New York or San Francisco. So it doesn't matter. You just leave. And you are not sick, and you are not wrong, and God does not hate you. Just leave. I can't. I can't walk, sir. Paul, I need you to come out here. If we, if you and me, take the words of the prophet seriously, then the task before us is clear. We must do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with our God to make sure that there are no more young men like the man in this wheelchair thinking that God does not love him. That is our task that's before us. That's the task of a moral life, of, letting, of, of a righteous life, of walking humbly with God, of letting others know that God loves them no matter what. We must do justice, love, mercy, and walk humbly with God to make sure that all our brothers and sisters, regardless of orientation, have full rights of opportunity and of marriage in our society and in our churches. There is no question and there is no debate. Amen? Amen. The red ribbons which were placed on our tower in 1993 have helped us as a congregation carry forth that effort. Many of you have come to this place recognizing God's call to do justice and love mercy as an integral part of this congregation's mission. We as a congregation have been vocal about the injustice perpetrated among gay and lesbian folk, both within the church and within the denomination by church, I mean, and in the larger society. And because of those efforts, we as a congregation last month were honored by LA Pride with the Berman Schaefer Award for Outstanding Community Service and Activism. Our award is here, and we have some commendations up here you're welcome to look at after the communion time today. And here is our group that marched in the parade. And if you marched in the parade or attended any of the pride events representing the church, would you please stand so we can honor you? Because we have sought to walk humbly with God and speak with that loud and clear voice that God loves everyone, we were honored by LA Pride this year. But that doesn't mean that we can slow down our efforts. Just as the prophet Micah was insistent on the need for justice, we must be too. We as a church must incarnate those words, all are welcome in this place. We must see the opportunities in our own lives that beckon us to do justice and love mercy on LGBT issues and on a wide range of issues in our society. That's what God requires of us. Not a written test, but a daily engaging of our lives, demonstrating with our entire being God's love for all persons. One of our congregation members who represented the church at Pride Week, Polly Perrette, <laughs> is going to share her thoughts on what it means as a person of faith to walk humbly with God and continue the legacy of Harvey Milk. Polly? Hello. Um, it, was a, it was such an honor. Um, to be recognized this year at Pride. Um, but it was particularly an honor because we are a church. It was really overwhelming. I actually, I, I left the church when I was younger because of the bigotry and hatred that I found within the church. And it just ran completely counter to what I believed that God was. And I believe that God is. Um, never thinking that the two shall meet, me becoming a civil rights